Hey, what's up guys? Craig Peters here, and today on the first episode of Plug and Play Tips and Tricks, I'm going to show you guys how to process two separate guitar DIs using one bus or group track in Cubase, so stick around. Alright, so we're in Cubase, and basically what we're going to be doing is taking our two separate guitar DIs, which, let me go ahead and bypass this, sounds like this. So not very inspiring, it's literally just straight DIs. So what we're going to do is we're going to use JST's Jason Richardson plugin, and, and this mix is actually the mix that I did for that demo. Uh, so basically, but I changed it a little bit because now I'm only going to be using one amp sim versus two. So this is a cool thing that you can do with the JST amp sims. Uh, basically, we're just going to have one instance of JST on our group, and then all our processing is going to follow. So, what's cool about this is that when you have this set up, any tweaks that you do is going to affect both of them. So, that's the great thing about doing it this way instead of having this open twice, so then you tweak it over here, then you have to tweak it again on the other one. So this just keeps it uniform, which is the, the reason why I like it. So let's go ahead and get into the processing a little bit. The next thing we have in the chain is we have the VCC from Slate. And uh, this is just for you know an adding a little bit of that analog uh, warmth that they call it. Uh, it sounds pretty cool, it adds a little bit of a boost in the top end. <laughs> So we got that, it's pretty cool. Then we have the virtual tape machine, pretty much kind of doing the same thing, add a little bit of that virtual tape. And what's cool about this is that it sort of smooths out a little bit of the, the sizzliness that can happen with some of the amp sims. And the JST is not very, I don't know, it doesn't respond like most typical amp sims. It actually sounds pretty natural. Uh, but it, it again, it's still, you know, an amp sim. So this helps a little bit with controlling some of that. <laughs> Kind of fills it up a little bit and sort of smooths it off, like I said. So that's cool to use. Then we have the the SSL E channel, which is really good for for doing a lot of high end boosting uh, when it comes to guitars. So let's just hear how it sounds, and then I'll go ahead and enable it. <laughs> Now, what's cool about this EQ is that you're actually boosting some of the top end and then cutting out some of the low mids, which tend to muddy up guitars and also filtering out at the bottom. Uh, one of the reasons I like this too is it just, it, when it comes to boosting the top end, it responds really well. You know, and I'm taking out a little bit of the low end, but the thing is you got to remember that, you know, we want the bass to do the bass job. So if you listen to this in the context of the mix, <laughs> You know, we really don't need a lot of low end, so but it still sounds full to me. I think it sounds pretty good. So the next thing we got in the chain, let me go ahead and solo this. We have our API 2500 compressor, and I just started using this, and uh, it's really good. I mean, I normally don't do a lot of compression on the guitars. I'm basically using this as sort of a um, accentuating the push of the attack of some of the of the different guitar playing. Like if you listen. <laughs> I want those, I want to kind of bring those out a little bit, so. Sort of getting those to pop a little bit. And then we have, this is mainly for filtering. This is the FabFilter Pro Q2. Why I like this and why I'm using it on the group is basically, if you see here, we have a, on the left side, a dip around 10, 10 K or 1 K and then we have a boost and pretty much why we're doing that is to sort of get a little bit more separation with the guitars instead of putting an EQ on the left and right track remember like I said we're processing everything in one single group so by doing it this way we're still keeping that but we're also able to process it with one plugin so we have that and then we have here, this is what it would sound like without it right, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, right here, if we were to just go ahead and solo this out. Yeah, 
that's the stuff we don't want. We don't need to get rid of it. Um, and then finally, we have the S1 imager from Waves. Basically, we're just sort of accentuating the uh, getting that wide spread for the guitars. And by doing the EQ trick I just did with uh, scooping out the left and the right, uh, that's, an al that's also another way of getting a little bit more separation with your guitars. Doing this and using this very subtly sort of enhances that a little bit more by doing it subtly. You don't want to get too crazy with this one because if you do, you're going to put your, push your guitars out of phase and you don't want that. So let's go ahead and hear how this sounds. <laughs> So it just sort of boosts it, makes it pop a little bit more, gives a little bit more width. And um, yeah, that's basically how you process all of your guitars using a single group in Cubase. So if you guys like this video and you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, any questions you guys have, things, problems you guys might encounter, maybe I can make some little tips and tricks videos on how to help you guys with those. Uh, and it doesn't all have to be mixing. It could also be you know, MIDI programming, programming drums, strings. Uh, I got a lot of cool things that I do in Cubase that's very helpful with the MIDI programming. So uh, yeah, thanks for checking it out. And I'll see you guys right back here next time on Plug and Play Tips and Tricks.